This is from the Washington Post this morning. Rosa Parks, civil rights icon, dead at 92. Rosa Parks, the Alabama seamstress whose soft-spoken refusal to give up her bus seat to a white man triggered the Montgomery bus boycott, the first great mass action in the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s, died yesterday. She was 92. I think you should spend some time today thinking about Rosa Parks and keep a seat open for her. Wow, history on a bus. Uh, back in 2002, Americans for Safe Access filed a formal petition with Health and Human Services requesting the rescheduling of marijuana. As most of you know, it's a Schedule One narcotic that our government considers to have no medical value. We, of course, know that this is completely inaccurate, so Americans for Safe Access filed that petition. Along the way, the other bit that we learned about was something called the Data Quality Act. And most people have never heard of it, including most people in Congress. The Data Quality Act was passed uh, under the Clinton administration. It's basically a giveaway to industry so that we get around environmental regulations. It's an act that tells the government that the government can't only accept its own research and its own data when it makes uh, decisions or makes laws, that it has to accept data from outside sources when it makes that consideration. And what it allows private industries to do is to challenge government regulation based on published science. So for instance, if uh, industry could hire someone to publish a report saying that smog was good for you, then they could challenge environmental regulations under the Data Quality Act. If you have a, a, a corporation that's a big polluter and the government is saying, yeah, we, our data shows you're a big polluter, they want to be able to show data that says they're not. And so that's kind of how this icky law came into effect. It's a terrible piece of legislation. But when we came across it, we thought to ourselves, what a wonderful way to sneak in the back door and force the rescheduling of marijuana. Oh, we get to turn this law upside down on its head. And so we're going to tell Health and Human Services that under the Data Quality Act, they have to accept all this outside medical research and use it in the considering of the petition. We have filed all of these petitions with the government and basically what Health and Human Services has done is they have filed for every possible extension, every possible appeal, everything you could imagine to deny this request. All deadlines for them expired September 26th of this year. So we thought it would be appropriate that 30 days after that deadline that we have a national action. We are going to be taking all 62,000 of those studies to Washington, D.C. and putting them on the doorstep of the Department of Health and Human Services and telling them that time is up. Now, we're doing this in Washington, D.C. Not everyone can get out there, but that's okay because there are 12 regional offices for the Department of Health and Human Services, including one that's in San Francisco. We're not expecting to do any civil disobedience. This is not a protest or a rally where we intend to get arrested. One real good reason for that is there is a legal conference going on in Portland at the same time we're doing this and all of our lawyers are there. So <laughs> we're not planning on getting any, any big trouble or getting arrested at this event. Uh, if that changes, sometimes the tide changes when you're at an event like this and it just seems like the appropriate thing to just jelly roll in front of the door and not let the people in or out, we'll go with the flow. <laughs> Medicine. We're asking the federal government to 
do one thing, reclassify medicine, reclassify marijuana from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. Cannabis is great for me. Join me. Schedule, schedule 1 to schedule, schedule 3. Cannabis is great for me. Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. Cannabis is great for me. Schedule 1 to Schedule 3. Cannabis is great for me. Secretary of Health and Human Services to listen to the scientific evidence and admit that marijuana has medical use. Stop publishing medical marijuana misinformation. You're sounding like the drug czar's office, which has already lost all of its credibility, as the DEA is doing now. Stop this illegal delay. Stop this illegal delay and reply to our petition honestly and compassionately. We have over 20,000 signatures from patients demanding this science Public health prevails when Health and Human Services makes its decision on petition request to reschedule marijuana. Safe and appropriate recommendations for a safe and effective medicine. Thank you. The truth actually can be seen in pictures, um, probably better than sometimes uh, our words. And the pictures I have here um, show Steve McWilliams, who you all know. Or if you don't know, but most people do know that Steve committed suicide in July. Steve was my partner. After three years of not being allowed to use cannabis by the federal government, he was drug tested every week. However, the truth of the pictures are this picture, the big picture was Steve on July 11th, okay, using cannabis um, on his birthday. The second one, which is kind of hard to see, was three years later on June 6th, Supreme Court day. The difference, in, especially when you look closely, not only is there a weight gain and you can see in the skin, but you can see it in the eyes. The pain that this man suffered at the hands of the federal government because of their actions was unconscionable. It was torture. They are the ones who killed Steve McWilliams, okay? Steve was denied his appeal because of the fact that he did not apply for a license from the federal government to grow an illegal substance. That was their rationale. So this is nonsense because as you all know, the federal government is the one who controls all the growing of the cannabis. They will not even allow the professor at the University of Massachusetts to grow cannabis so we can have independent research. The government has a monopoly not only on controlling the fact that we can't have cannabis, but on a monopoly on any research that is going to be potentially helpful for us. We have to stop this. Patients have to have the right to grow and be independent. It does work, and it's a very affordable medicine if patients can have their caregivers grow it, grow it for them. So right on, let's get it rescheduled now. Thank you. Woo!